hour <laughs> where we are going to talk about building empowerment, joy, confidence, and peace after betrayal. We are going to be getting down into some nitty gritty and give you some skills and tools today that may be new to you, maybe a reminder. And then just full transparency, we're going to be talking a lot about our summer retreat that is coming up pretty soon. We have two more spots open. We just want to be really clear about what we talk about, what you gain from attending the retreat. Kendra, yes. start us off. What are some of those, yes. what are some of your favorite things that we talk about in the retreat in terms of empowerment after betrayal? Yeah. Hello. It's so hard for me to pick because I love them all, but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about boundaries today. As I've been talking to the other women who are coming to the retreat and they've been talking about what they're most excited to learn about from us, boundaries is one of those things. And boundaries is something I love teaching because it changed my life so much. Finally understanding that setting a boundary is not being confrontational. It's not being mean. It's like literally protecting myself, but like just setting myself up for success in the future. Boundaries are for you. Boundaries aren't for the other person. Now it appears that way because they're like in the first, I'm, I'm going to give you a formula here for how to set boundaries. They appear in this formula. So it would appear that the boundary is for them, but really the boundary is for you so that you've already decided ahead of time what you'll do depending on their behavior. And so I also really love this because it allows that other person to do whatever they're going to do, to not control them, but to just kind of give them a heads up or just for yourself. Because I get that question all the time too. Do I have to tell the other person about my boundary? And the answer is you can, you don't have to, but it's you knowing for yourself what you're going to do depending on what the other person does. So let me just pull this very fancy graphic that I have here for you. My amazing whiteboard. Very high um, tech. <laughs> this is the basic formula for a boundary. If you, other person, partner, friend, parent, whoever, do X, Y, Z, then I will do A, B, C. Okay, so it's just deciding ahead of time from the smartest part of your brain from your prefrontal cortex, when your nervous system is in check and you are calm and just thinking clearly, you're deciding, hey, cool, other human, you get to do whatever you wanna do. I certainly hope that you will not look at porn. I certainly hope that you will not contact other women. I certainly hope that you will stop talking to the affair partner. That's my desire, I really want that. But if you do keep talking to them, if you do continue to look at pornography, then I will do this. And so it's already deciding ahead of time. So that it like takes care of all the drama when the thing happens. So then if you find out that they were looking at porn again, or you find out that they were contacting somebody else that you would ask them not to, then you're like, okay, cool. You did that thing. So I will now do this thing. And whether that's giving space for yourself, whether that's asking the person to like separate, give you some space, whether that's stay in another room, whether that's stay in another house, whatever your piece of the boundary is, you've already decided. And I like to think of it as your future self is hiring you to take care of her. And so she's hiring you today to decide what you'll do to take care of her in the future. And so this is something you can do today. The other person does not have to get on board whatsoever, but you've made your request to them and they've agreed. But so usually people like relationships that are trying to heal, they've agreed, I'm gonna stop looking at porn. Cool, that's what I've asked you to do. Or, hey, please stop talking to the affair partner. Cool, I've blocked her on all the things. And that's like the agreement. But this is the kind of contingency plan. Okay, cool. But if you did do that thing that you said you weren't going to do, then I've already decided what I'm going to do. 
And then it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to send you into a tailspin if that thing happens. Oh my gosh, what do I do now? Everything's gone wrong. All these things. Of course, you will be sad and maybe even devastated that they have again contacted this person that they said they weren't going to. Those feelings won't go away, but it will help you avoid that out of control tailspin of trying to figure out what do I do now? Because you've already decided. Yeah. One of the beauties of this really simple, clear statement is that after betrayal, what I find most of us, myself included, struggle with is self-trust and Mm -hmm. trusting other people, Yep. self-esteem, like self, the way we see ourselves and emotional regulation, like being able to have a clear mind and a clear heart and to feel really confident in, in your emotional regulation. Those seem to be the three things most people who've experienced betrayal struggle with. And the system of setting boundaries is so beautiful because like Kendra was mentioning, when you have your own back, you have future use back and you consistently follow through, you're building self-trust, you're building self-esteem, you're building regulation because you're creating a safer environment for yourself, which is often what dysregulates us as an unsafe environment. Not always, but it can be a component. And so while you're looking at the simple if then statement. You may have even heard this before, but you may be looking at it like, okay, that looks easy. And we'll talk more about that in a second. I do want to give you some reasoning for why this might be important for you and how this statement on its own and using it can lead to healing some of those heartache places that you might be struggling with, some of those things that you might want help with. But Kendra, why don't you, before I get to the, that's too hard objections that might be coming up, why don't you go through a few examples of what this would look like? So maybe let's do if there's a, a the porn addiction situation or like okay. the compulsive, yeah. and then let's do the contact with the affair partner example. Okay. Oh, cool. Yes. So let's first talk about the porn addiction or like, however you label that. I know some people have a issue with porn addiction. If you and your partner have, yeah, (laughs) if they have this compulsive behavior around it and they are watching it more frequently than you would like them to watch. And the two of you have made an agreement on it. This is what we're talking about. So the partner who watches porn has agreed. I'm going to either go to therapy and get help. I'm going to stop on my own, whatever it is they've agreed. And so together you have an agreement that like that they're on board with. Okay. So, so I guess this is like step two boundaries and we can even go back to what step one would be, but it would be like, if you watch porn, that would be our X, Y, Z, then I will, and you get to decide what that is. But a lot of people, it will say then, then I will ask you to sleep in a different room. I'll highlight that again, as you're writing that, that whatever your then statement, your ABC is, needs to be really seeped into your values, your identity, your integrity. And I'll get a little bit more into that in a bit, but Kendra can write this example because it's a very common choice example, but you just need to remember that one, we're not controlling what they do. We can just make Mm -hmm. another request, right? That they sleep in another Mm -hmm. room. And if for you, the sleeping in another room thing doesn't work, That's fine. That's okay. That's not bad. You are going to be the one to determine what the ABC looks like. Yeah. And also ask yourself, why is that my ABC, right? Am I wanting them to sleep in a separate room? Because the reason I don't want them to watch porn is because I feel like that is going outside of our intimate marital relations. And then I don't feel comfortable sleeping next to somebody that has been sleeping with somebody else. And so what, whatever your reason why is will also determine what your ABC is. So why have you asked them not to do X, Y, Z? That will determine what your ABC is. And it can be different for everybody. So I truly, truly believe that you are your own best expert and you will know what's right for you. So like when I coach my clients, I don't tell them, okay, your partner can't watch porn. And if he does, you need to ask him to sleep in another room. You need to tell him to sleep on the couch. And if he does it three times, then you have to kick him out of the house. And if he does it again, then you have to do this. There is no perfect formula. It will look different for every single person. But if you like your reasons why you chose it, then it's absolutely the right decision for you. We're just giving an example here. It literally could be anything. 
that you ask them to do. But if you like your reason why, and to you it's connected in your brain, if ABC is connected to XYZ, then that's the right choice. And I'll also add that you have the right to change your mind at any time. So if you try this, and you and whether you've told him or not, but if you have set your boundary and you try it and you're like, okay, that didn't work. I asked him to sleep on the couch, wasn't far enough. Next time I'm gonna ask him to leave the house and he'll either have to go to his mom's or he'll have to go to a hotel or he'll sleep in his truck. So you get to also decide, okay, that one didn't really work for me, why? And then what might make that why go away? Like the why didn't it work? Then we can brainstorm and come up with another solution because especially when you're new to betrayal, you may not know what you want your ABC to be. You know for sure that you don't want him looking at porn. You know that for sure. But you don't necessarily know what you would want him to do to help you feel safe. That's okay. You can try it out. It can totally be a trial and error. But the beauty of having decided ahead of time of something, even if you're like, I don't know what it should be. I'm just trying this out. In the moment, it still takes away that panic feeling of what do I do? He did the thing that he said he wasn't going to do. And so even if that thing doesn't work and you try again and you set a different boundary for the next time, it will help take care of some of that panic in the moment and help you stay calm to be able to follow through with the boundary. Because if you don't have a boundary in place and you don't, and you haven't picked any ABC yet, then it can be really panic. Like, oh my gosh, he did the thing that he said he wasn't going to do. My world has exploded. I found for myself when I finally had the boundaries that I felt comfortable with, I knew I would follow through on. And I liked my reasons for having those boundaries just to speak to what you're saying, Kendra. And this was many years ago, but I felt like so much more peace and confidence knowing that I had a plan of action that I knew that I could follow through on and that I didn't know necessarily the long-term consequences of all of those boundaries, but that my reasoning for the information I had in the moment worked. And that brought on so much confidence and comfort knowing no matter what happens, I have a plan and Mm -hmm. I feel confident in myself in enacting that plan. And some of that plan required other people's support and help, but absolutely, that is one way that we bring in some more self-trust and self-confidence in mm-hmm. setting these boundaries. Why don't you go through the affair partner? So yeah. so like they're texting, maybe if they said, okay, if you reach out to the affair partner, then I will ABC. Yeah. Okay, great. And I want to point out too, that along with the confidence that comes, if you're sitting here looking at this and you're like, I don't know if I could ask them to sleep in the other room, if that's the thing that feels too big, or like I'd ask him to leave the house, or I'd tell him I'm ready for a divorce or whatever it is. If your ABC feels too big and scary and you don't believe yourself that you could follow through, go backwards a little bit and pick like the next smaller thing and see if you believe yourself there because you can always change your mind in either direction. And so choose whatever you believe that you'll do. So that like what Kaylee was saying, that it will give you that confidence that this is something I can do. Mm -hmm. So even if you think I would definitely want him to move out of the house, especially as we go into talking about the affair, affair partner, if what you want him to do, you don't believe that you could follow through with, maybe have a couple options. So let's put this into real words. So if you talk to the affair partner, then I will set an emergency appointment with, and then either your coach or your therapist or whatever. I will ask you to leave the house. And what's the third part of this? File for divorce. (laughs) Yeah, sure. That could be the next level. Yeah. And so this could be any one of these. It could be all three of these. It could be like Kaylee was saying, it could be, okay, first I'm going to do this. Then the next day, depending on how I'm feeling, I'm going to do this. Then the next day, depending on how I'm feeling, I'm going to do this. And it might be like, I reserve the right to do that type thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it could even be like these first couple things. I'll set an emergency appointment with them and I'll ask you to leave the house. 
and I reserve the right to file for divorce, right? So if you want to let your partner know that I'm serious, I'm like you, I'm willing to work with you if you are willing to work on this. But if you are going to go back to the affair partner for any reason, if you are not willing to completely cut off contact with her and never speak to her again, then I will not stay married to you. And it can just be as simple as that, that it's, look, human, I am willing to work through this with you. I value our marriage. I value you as a person. I can understand whatever their reason story is or whatever, right? Like I'm willing to forgive that, but I'm not willing to stay married to you if you continue any kind of contact with her. So we've made this agreement. He's agreed to it. And then if he breaks that and he has any kind of contact with the affair partner, then you could say, okay, cool. Yeah, this is this has got me riled up. So I'm going to set an emergency appointment with my person, with my coach or my therapist or both. I'm going to ask you to leave the house while I figure out exactly what I want to do. And I reserve the right to file for divorce because that is the agreement that we made. Not only was that the agreement we made in our wedding vows that we wouldn't step outside the marriage, but that's the agreement we made post-discovery and that we had an agreement that you would never speak to her again or have mm -hmm. any kind of contact. And so the fact that you now have, okay, I reserve this right. You could still choose to stay married. So this isn't then saying, oh, I'm a liar if I don't, but it's you saying, look, you did this to yourself. <laughs> this was already known. This was already agreed to. And cool, you've shown me what you really wanted to do. Yep, exactly. I think a lot of people are have questions about that. Let's do a dating. Let's say you're going on dates with someone and how do you communicate boundaries or what boundaries would even come up? Yeah. And so you totally get to decide, right? So let's say before you meet somebody, you have a rule that you don't sleep with somebody until the third date. I pick that number out of the thin air. So it could be any number. It could be the 10th. It could be the second. It could be whatever number is right for you. But let's say it's the third. And so you have this boundary. You can either tell the person ahead of time or not. But let's say that's the thing, not till the third date. So if you ask me to sleep with you prior to the third date, then I will say, no, thank you. If you try to take my clothes off, then I will use my words and tell you no. Or it can even be like that I will not have sex with anybody that I don't feel totally enthusiastically wanting to in the moment. And so it doesn't even have to be like a number thing. It could just be, I no longer like, especially women who have come out of relationships with addicts or narcissistic abuse relationships or things like that, they did a lot of like duty sex and they just weren't really feeling it, but they're like, I'm doing this. So he won't look at porn. I'm doing this for whatever reason, right? Good or bad. It's, we're not judging that. But often if you come from a place of feeling like you needed to out of obligation, even just telling yourself, I won't do that anymore. I will not say yes. Even if I previously said yes to a person, I will not continue to say yes. I will never again have sex with somebody that I don't feel like I can enthusiastically say absolutely yes, I want to, which you can't necessarily quantify. It's like a check in with yourself kind of thing. So if you ask me to have sex with you, then I will check in with myself internally and make sure that it's an enthusiastic yes. And if it is, great, then I am a consenting adult who is making my own choice. And it doesn't matter if it's the first date or the 10th date or the third and then not again till the seventh. It doesn't matter. Right. So like I always say the boundary is for you and it totally is. So if you other person happen to invite me to do that with you, then I will check in with myself and I will never again agree to that when I don't feel a certain way. Yeah. And then it's like keeping that boundary to yourself. And I'm going to honor that for me. Yeah. 
I think this example highlights this really crucial key point of boundaries, which is that because boundaries are for us, you don't actually, you're not obligated to communicate any of that to anybody. You can make agreements like we were talking about earlier, where let's say there's a discovery of some kind of sexual betrayal. You decide that you're going to try to work it out. Your partner is going to therapy and taking certain steps. You might make agreements with them and where you're clearly communicating your ifs and your thens, or maybe just your ifs, like just your requests where you're like, hey, would you please do this? And you're mm -hmm. holding in reserve your thens, especially yeah. in cases if you're in a relationship with someone who has a history of power and domination, control and abuse, whatever iteration of that looks, it can actually be really wise to not share your thens and what I'm going to do. Because mm -hmm. we do know that people who have been trained in boundaries without with the abuse awareness and knowledge will say, oh yeah, go tell him if you do this, then I'll leave. Well, that just leads to more hiding and lying and deception, or it can actually lead to more escalation and violence. And so I love how you're giving this example because it's showing you don't necessarily have to be like, Hello, Bob. Welcome to my first date. If you try to take off my clothing, that'd be pretty awkward. I guess it depends on your community and your location, but you may not communicate that day one. You might want to. That, that might help you feel safe. But you have these kind of almost like computer programs in your brain. Like if this happens, beep, boop, this is what happens next, right? You just have it almost programmed into your integrity around your own behavior. And then sometimes when you're in a relationship with someone, and you might have to communicate, well, if you do that, then this is going to be the outcome. And you let them know, or you come to an agreement. But, and I know now we're making it more complicated, but really this statement will get you a long way. It can maybe seem, it, it could be confusing a little bit to pick something that's about feelings because then it's then how do I really know what the boundary is or whatever, but really what it doesn't create more confusion, it creates more connection with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if you're like, I will not go on a second date with anybody that I don't feel like it's an enthusiastic yes after the first date, or I will end a date if I feel really uncomfortable in whatever way, if I feel like they don't listen to me at all. Like just setting this own little standard for yourself that's I'm going to continue to check in with myself. And if I get the ick for whatever reason, whether I can identify why or not, that I'm going to trust myself and I'm going to end the date. So because, and this kind of goes into like, how do we re rebuild trust? How do we learn how to trust our gut again? And this is some of those ways that you do that is that you're so willing to trust your gut above anything else that you don't need a why anymore. And so if you feel that ick, you don't have to continue the date and finish it to find out what is wrong, right? <laughs> right. You might be five to 10 years down the road before you really figure out what's wrong. But if you don't feel good and comfortable and safe, you don't continue, right? And learning to date again after betrayal is a lot about learning how to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. And people ask me like, Kendra, how do you date after two divorces? And like, how are you out there? And sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not. But when I am, it's coming from a place of complete self-trust. I don't need to trust them, honestly. And if they give me any reason not to trust them, then I am definitely out of there, right? But I go into it that I don't have to trust them because I trust myself so much that I will totally leave any situation that I am not feeling comfortable in, that is not an enthusiastic hell yes to, that, that I totally drive my own ship based on my feelings of how I'm feeling. It's because I learned to trust my gut again. And so that like boundary of I will do this if I'm feeling a certain way, it's not more confusing. It's actually more simple because it's just checking in with yourself. It's not even a super specific X, Y, Z here because it's not so much about you, but it's if I'm feeling a certain way, if I'm feeling uncomfortable, if it's not an enthusiastic hell yes for me, then I will not sleep with you. The whole thing can be about you, even though the other person is there anyway, right? Because it's still not about them and their specific behavior. It's all about how you feel, which is also 
honestly where these things come from too because why don't you want him looking at porn usually it's because it makes you feel a certain way <laughs> right it's all about if i'm feeling a certain way if something happens that creates this feeling for me then i will do whatever yeah so i think sometimes whenever we teach this or talk about it in a short form like we're doing now there's some objections that come up and I want to just say what mm -hmm. objections I hear people say often about yeah. boundaries in general and what to do with that. So if you're sitting here, I've heard if then I've read maybe even some st standard old school books about boundaries that have some stuff in them. And I've heard this phrase before and it sounds nice and dandy, but I get stuck or it's not going to work. Let me walk you through these. So sometimes people will say, I don't know what X, Y, and Z's to ask for. What are the right mm -hmm. boundaries to set? What boundaries should I ask for? What requests should I have? Mm -hmm. um, other people will say, okay, I know what I don't like, but I don't know what's fair to ask for. Yeah. And Kendra's talking a lot about feelings. And so sometimes people say, well, I can't trust my feelings right now. Mm -hmm. Or there's the, then I don't know what's the right ABC to do. What's the right mm -hmm. then? Is there a right one? What's fair? What makes sense? What's valid? These questions come up a lot. There's also, yeah. I know my partner's not going to X, Y, and Z, but I'm not really willing to ABC anything. So what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And then I mentioned before these, do I have to tell them? When do I have to tell them? Mm -hmm. And so just remember that this little discussion we're having right now is just giving you a teaser and a sneak peek of one small mm -hmm. part of a larger solution and system that we have curated in the form of our retreat this is the heart the beating heart is like how do I make what I prefer even these days to call strategic decisions how do I do that and at our retreat which will be June 25th to the 29th mm -hmm. in Seaside Oregon mm -hmm. I've never been there Kendra grew up there it's going to be amazing because she knows the lay of the land so we're going to get it. to do all the fun stuff yeah our beach house is literally on the beach, we will be hearing the waves as we go to sleep. And as we do our conference, we will be hearing the waves. We'll be going on walks to the beach. It's going to be incredible. We will outline the full solution on all of those questions that I just said. What X, Y, Z should I do? Or how do I even come up with? How do I figure out what they should be? When you're with us, we are going to be in the weeds with you. We're going to hear your as much of your story as you feel comfortable sharing. We are going to be going, okay get your piece of paper out, get your book out. You have your journal. We are coming up with ideas. We are addressing what we've seen with our hundreds of clients that mm -hmm. we've both done over the last pretty much 15 years a piece, 20 years a piece. So we've got a lot of experience we're bringing to the table. What's worked? What doesn't work? Oh, that works. Let me throw this little caution with mm -hmm. you because you really want this boundary. Let's just explore that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you walk away with some really strategic plans as mm -hmm. well as a ton of skills and tools. So the retreat will be multiple days of learning and sitting in this stuff, as well as play and mm -hmm. laughter. If you can tell, we're both smiley, happy people. They just want to bring you into life after betrayal, regardless of if you're in the relationship or if you end up leaving the relationship or if you end up staying in the relationship, mm -hmm. you can be happy and joyful. Yeah. Kendra has had two divorces and she lives a beautiful life with her kiddos. I am still married to my husband and we have a beautiful life with our kiddos and we're doing life and we don't, we're not going to push and pull one way or the other. We are going to walk with you where you're at to that next step to create those strategic decisions and to just really love your choices for making them so that you walk away saying things like our last retreat saying that felt like magic. <laughs> like, I feel like a different person. What just happened? Yeah. And one of the beautiful things about um, group coaching, which is what a retreat is, say we're sitting around and we're talking about boundaries specifically. If your specific main painful thing that you're working on is boundaries with your partner about porn and somebody else's is boundaries around an affair partner and somebody else's is boundaries with co-parenting post-divorce or whatever it is, you're personally working on your own thing, but you're also hearing us workshop with the other people about their particular things. And you learn so much by watching other people be coached because you can identify pieces inside of you and inside your brain that's, oh my gosh, 
That's like me and my mother-in-law. That's like me and my whoever. That's, you can identify that and you get to gain all of that knowledge and all of those ideas too in the same amount of time as if you were one-on-one -on -one working through your own boundaries. And really you do get to learn just so much more because there are other people and because we're really specific about who we let come to the retreat, you are going to learn a lot from all the other people being coached. So I love group settings when the group is all in similar-ish, right, places. It doesn't, and, and by that, it doesn't matter if somebody is already divorced. It doesn't matter if somebody is definitely staying married or definitely separating or like it, where on that spectrum of relationship you are, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you've experienced that feeling of betrayal you've had boundaries crossed, you know for sure what crossed boundaries feels. You may not know what holding a boundary feels like, but you know that you definitely don't want it to feel like that other crossed boundary. And so together you can learn both about your own and about like other people's. And you just go home with that many more skills and ideas about how to set other future boundaries for yourself. So I really like yeah. the group setting um, yeah. Another super special feeling about the group is that everyone is wanting growth for themselves and maybe for the relationship too. But there is that kind of, when you said like everyone's in the same place, I think that same place, part of that is they're saying, I'm ready to take this next step. And so you get a better feeling of instead of, oh, you should do this. You should do that. You should do that. And you kind of so I know sometimes people get concerned about groups. They're like, mm -hmm. what if I go in and everyone's just like trauma dumping and then like their stuff is getting all over me and they're telling me what to do. Like we create a really boundary mm -hmm. container yeah. for everyone so that we all feel like we can share openly our personal experiences, but we allow others to have their own experiences, their own choices. Yeah. But also we make sure that it's a really safe place and we've never had an issue. We always feel mm -hmm. like, even those who are like, oh, I'm not really a girl's girl, or I don't, I don't know. Or even I actually have a hard time with women right now because of my experiences yeah. and I have a hard time trusting women. This can be a really sweet experience where you come in and you connect with other women and you remind yourself the goodness of women and the goodness of, uh, of all these different places. Right. Cause sometimes I've been in groups where one person was like a supermodel. I haven't had this in our retreats, but group coaching. And it was so beautiful for everyone to rally around her and go, oh my gosh, like it really healed everyone's hearts to love her and for her to feel loved and for them to say, I'm so triggered by you. And for her to say, I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. I get it. And yeah. it, just, it was really healing for every person. Mm -hmm. And that's just one small example, right? Yeah. But we do make sure that everyone is sensitive and kind and safe in that yeah. space. So there's some... For those that do have concerns about that group thing, uh, I get that, but yeah. it, it actually can, has multiple layers of healing if you'll take the leap when it's mm -hmm. a little bit scary for you. Yeah. And one of the other things that I love about the way we set up the whole environment of the retreat and like how our sessions go and how our group play activities go and everything like that is it really sets you up to be able to be yourself and to that it allows other people to be themselves and then you can make friendships. So this last weekend, um, I went down to Dallas, Texas to go see the eclipse in its full entirety, totality or whatever. And I went with my betrayal bestie. So she and I met 12 years ago at a retreat when we were both like fresh in our betrayal and we shared a room and we have been best friends ever since. We have never lived in the same city we like, we've met up, we've gone to a few other retreats together. And then we went on just an annual women's like girls trip together. But I just want you to know that we set this up on purpose so that you can make those connections with other women and find your betrayal bestie. There is so much thought that goes into literally every moment. Every food, every, every food. break. Every resting period. Yes. Like all of the things serve a purpose. Even the, the exact location of Seaside, Oregon. We could have picked any beach town, <laughs> right? 
I will tell you, I picked Seaside, Oregon specifically because when you go walking on the beach in Seaside, one is really fun because they are known for having whole sand dollars on the beach year round. You can find whole sand dollars. And when you are taking a walk and your eyes are looking down at the sand and it's looking for something specific, so your eyes are occupied, that part of your brain is occupied, you're smelling the salty air, a little bit tasting the salty air. Maybe your sense of taste isn't necessarily activated, but whatever. Your sense of touch is activated because you're picking up the shells or you're touching the sand or your feet are touching the sand. You're hearing the waves. All of your senses are being activated so it's taking up enough of your brain that it's not going to be wandering to all the places and it allows you to process the things you've been thinking about and learning about in session. It allows you to work through, like there, there is true scientific studies behind these things. And so I didn't want to go to any beach. I wanted to go to the beach where I knew your brain could be activated looking for this very specific item, these sand dollars, and then to have it be that symbol of your healing, of these healing walks that you go on, whether with somebody else or totally alone and finding yourself and finding these shells. And that, so even down to just specifically where we are, that I want you to hear the sound of the waves all day long, if you want to, we really have thought of every single thing specifically for this retreat. And we are here to serve you and help you heal from your betrayal wherever you're at, whether you're fresh and you found out yesterday and this is your first day in the group and you're just trying to figure it all out or whether you have been in and out of betrayal with your partner for the last five or 10 years. It doesn't matter where you're at. We're here to help you make decisions that feel good for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Say are your top favorite moments or times or events from our last retreat? I don't mean to be like too cryptic or anything, but we do like to keep a few little secrets. Yeah, I'll keep some secrets too. Yeah. But Kaylee does a really cool art activity with us, <laughs> which this is one of those things that really stretched me and I had <laughs> it to <did>. outside <laughs> of my comfort zone for, but I was like, I'm with the retreat leader, man. No, nobody's going to see me crumble here. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to do this thing. So I was pretty proud of myself even for being able to like do the thing, but it was so beautiful. Like I still have it on display. I can see it right there. And I know that it was really meaningful for the ladies who came last year. Kaylee did a really cool, I won't call it art therapy because this is, this is not yeah. a therapy retreat, but yeah. healing artistic activity that we did that was one of my favorite parts yeah yeah Good. what about you I'm very excited for what we lovingly call the burn shit party it went a little sideways but it was still so meaningful that's something that Kendra did where we spent a lot of time I won't again I don't want to spoil the whole thing but it was very symbolic and I think very meaningful to everyone in the group to participate in and it's not just it in, can include items that we burn but it also really a lot of it is um mindsets and things that people have told us and we really symbolically let go of some hard things and I'm really excited for that in this upcoming yes. retreat and we the things that went sideways last year is that I am not a fire expert person <laughs> the fire and we woman <laughs> we have already accounted for that and we do have a cook coming to take care of all of our amazing meals and she is a fire expert person so I guarantee it will I'm go it will go flawlessly <laughs> for yes. sure one of the other things that I really love helping women do is reclaim something for them that felt taken away oh. or tarnished from the betrayal. Previous retreats, I've taken them to like sunny beaches where if you feel like you need to reclaim the beach because you used to be so triggered by like women in swimsuits or something like that, we do uh, certain things to help you reclaim the beach. This year, we have new to this retreat, a reclaiming activity that I'm really excited about that 
again, I like to have my little secrets. <laughs> um, but, but if you at all struggle with feeling appreciated or feeling celebrated, if your relationship and your specific partner, for whatever reason, doesn't celebrate you and doesn't appreciate like the things that you do, this is your year to come because I am helping you reclaim that. I promise that you will not feel that way anymore after this retreat. Kendra tried to keep it a secret for me for a day. She's like, I can't anymore. I have to tell you. (laughs) I'm, I'm a vault. I'm a vault. I will not share it. And then something that I'm also really looking forward to as we wrap up Mm -hmm. is something that's also new to this retreat, which is our, we're going to use a lot of music in our coaching and we are going to have a celebrity ladies. When I tell you right now, you might be like, who is this person? Like they're a celebrity. No, like literally in three years, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I met them. And you're going to tell people (laughs) because her stuff is already blowing up in certain pockets of the world. But in three to five years, you're probably going to be like, oh, I met her. So Kelsey Lamb is a country singer. And even if you're not super into country, I promise, if you're like a grunge girl, if you're an emo girl, I don't care. You're still going to like the lyrics. If you're like, I can't read the lyrics, Kelsey Lamb. And she's going to be not only speaking with us about betrayal, because she, a lot of her music talks about the betrayal healing process, but she's going to sing live for us. And it's going to be so good. I'm really excited. I think there's something for me, there was a moment in my healing journey where I had gotten to a certain, I don't know what you call milestone on my journey, where I was at a recovery event. And an opera singer sang one of my favorite songs. It like was transforming. Like hearing this opera singer sing one of my songs at this event was absolutely transforming. And so I know that music can just be so powerful. So for those of you who are joining us, I know we already have several, actually quite a few people signed up for the retreat. If you're here, hey, I'm so Mm -hmm. excited. Um, (laughs) But listen to her music and like you're going to a concert, you know how you do and you're just like binge watch or binge listen to everything in that way for sure and then if you're just questioning and wondering go listen to her music and be like is this something that I think for some people just hearing her sing live would be like the oh my gosh I have to come check out her music it really it just is gonna speak to your heart so yeah and and I put it down in the chat Kelsey Lamb you made me that's specifically the song that we're referencing but she has other songs that talk about betrayal let me just tell you how excited she is to come to this so That song spoke to me a lot, even years into my recovery from betrayal. It really spoke to me. And I drove a couple hours to a little concert that she was given. And I went and I met her like at halftime, like intermission or whatever. And I waited in line and I went and said hi. And she's, and I was like, your song has just touched me so much. I'm like, I am a life coach and I help women heal after betrayal and narcissistic relationships. And she's, oh my gosh, how can I get involved? And I was like, I don't know, but I'm sure we could find a way. And she's, I want to help. It was so hard for me to figure out how to heal without this kind of stuff. That if you're doing that, I like, I want to be there. I want to help. I want to do it. Like definitely keep in contact with me. Like she's the most genuine woman. I adore her as a human. I adore her as a musician. Like I am a country music lover. So I love the sound of it and I love the words. But she is so great. And so the fact that you'll be able to be like, she talked to me. Like, I, she, like, I feel like I know her. And getting to hear her sing live acoustic, I'm sure that it will be her husband accompanying her. He's amazing too. I've met him. You guys are really going to love Kelsey. And I know she's just going to connect with everybody and us getting to hear even more of her story than she says in her songs. This is, and this is the only retreat of any kind that she's doing this at is just ours because I asked her and introduced her and told her what we're doing. She's like, I have to be involved. I really want to do this. It's such a treat. <laughs> it's going to be so, so good. So many different things. And that's just some of the fun things we're talking yeah. about, but every moment is really curated for your healing, your growth, your ability to make strategic decisions, your ability to trust yourself and to trust other safe people and your ability to move forward after this horrible thing happened to you. I do have to say though, we have two spots left. Yes. It's already been said. 
two spots left. The first two people to pay their $50 deposit will be the two people that get to come to the retreat. This is a first come first serve, first sign up gets to come. So if you're on the fence about this and you are thinking that you want to, I will pop in the comments the link to go to to be able to register if you're ready to do that. And we'll have the retreat page so that you can go and get all of the information. I mean, it has all the information, but send us any questions. Like we really are here to make sure that you understand, like we don't want anybody coming to the retreat that does not belong at the retreat and it's not a good fit. So for sure, ask us your questions. I would love to talk to you. Um, there is no question that is too silly or whatever. We would love to have you at the retreat. Thank you all for coming and hanging out with us. I hope you got at least a little something from chatting about boundaries. Thanks so much, friends. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.